The Meyerson classification describes fractures and dislocations of the tarsal metatarsal or Les Francs joint, which is the articulation between the bases of the five metatarsals and their respective cuneiforms and the cuboid. In this video, we're going to review the important anatomy and biomechanics of the Les Francs joint, the mechanisms of injury, important radiographic findings, and finally, the classification itself. The Les Francs joint complex is held together by a number of tarsal metatarsal, intermetatarsal, and intertarsal ligaments. The tarsal metatarsal ligaments are divided into a dorsal, interosseous, and plantar components. And the weakest is a dorsal component, and we're going to come back to this point later. The strongest and the most important of the tarsal metatarsal ligaments is the Les Francs ligament itself which courses in the anterior lateral direction obliquely and starts from the medial cuneiform and attaches to the base of the second metatarsal. And it has a weak dorsal component and a strong plantar and interosseous component. Now sometimes you hear radiologists and some surgeons say the list from proper ligament. When they say proper, they're referring specifically to the interosseous component. And on MRI, normally the interosseous component of the Les Francs ligament, the length should be about 9 millimeters with a standard deviation of about 1.5. And the width should be about 5 millimeters, give or take 1.3. For the intermetatarsal ligaments, the ones that connect the bases of all the metatarsals, the most important concept that you need to know in terms of the anatomy is that there is no intermetatarsal ligament that connects the bases of the first and second metatarsals. However, the lesser metatarsals are connected by intermetatarsal ligaments, and this is also a point we're going to come back and talk about later. In terms of the intertarsal ligaments, those would be the ones that connect the cuneiforms and the cuboid. And one important thing to know is that sometimes, depending on the mechanism of injury, there could be a separation between the first and second cuneiform. And again, this is also a point we're going to come back to later when we talk about radiographic findings. In terms of biomechanics, the structure of the metatarsals and the cuneiforms is that of a Roman arch, with the highest point being the base of the second metatarsal, and this is often referred to as the keystone. The, the middle three metatarsals and the cuneiforms, if you look at them in cross-section, they have a trapezoidal shaped morphology and they are wider dorsally than they are plantarly. And this is important because this provides stability and it allows the midfoot to act as a rigid lever during gait. The second metatarsal base is held tightly in place in this recess that is between the first and third cuneiforms and this maintains a transverse arch. The Les Francs joint complex is divided into three functional units or columns. The medial column is the first metatarsal and the first cuneiform. The middle column is the second and third metatarsals and the second and third cuneiforms. And the lateral column is the fourth and fifth metatarsal and their articulation with the cuboid. The middle column has the least amount of movement. It has only about 0.6 millimeters in the sagittal plane. Whereas the lateral column has the most amount of movement. It has about 13 or 14 millimeters in the sagittal plane. And it also has movement in pronation and supination. Now this point is more important in, for surgery and not so much for radiology and but not so much for radiology and classification, but when it comes to surgical planning and trying to figure out what type of fixation to use, this actually becomes really important. So generally speaking, when you are fixating the medial column and the middle column, you often use screws and plates. Whereas for the lateral column, because there's more motion, you want to maintain that motion even after the surgery. So generally, they'll put styming pins or K-wires in there for about four to six weeks and then remove them. And those styming pins are not providing compression, they're just holding 
the bones in place, allowing the bone callus to form, allowing healing to occur, and then hopefully the idea being that that motion in the lateral column is still preserved long after surgery. There are two general mechanisms of injury. There is direct, which is also known as high impact, and these are seen in crush injuries or motor vehicle accidents. And with these types of injuries, you worry about vascular compromise, extensive soft tissue trauma, and compartment syndrome. In the indirect type, there are two subtypes. There is axial loading and there is twisting. In axial loading, the ankle joint and the metatarsophalangeal or MTP joints are both plantar flexed and a vertical force is applied directly to the rear foot and that force is transmitted along the longitudinal axis of the metatarsals and that will result in a dorsal displacement of the metatarsal basis. Why do they go dorsal? Well that makes sense because remember in the tarsal metatarsal ligaments the weakest component is a dorsal component so the dorsal capsule is the first one to give and that's where the metatarsal basis will usually displace. In the twisting type of injuries the foot is often pronated during the time of injury and the forefoot is forcefully abducted or laterally rotated. What do you expect to see on x-ray? Well, number one, you would expect to see an increase in the space or a diastasis between the first and second metatarsal bases. And why does that make sense? Because, remember, there is no intermetatarsal ligament that connects the bases of the first and second metatarsals. You can also see a lateral deviation or displacement of all the lesser metatarsals as a unit. Why does that make sense? Because remember, all the lesser metatarsals, the bases are connected via intermetatarsal ligaments. Now let's talk about the radiographic findings, starting with the AP. Normally, the lateral border of the first metatarsal and the lateral border of the first cuneiform should line up. The medial border of the second metatarsal and the medial border of the second cuneiform should also line up. On the oblique, normally, the third metatarsal base, the medial and the lateral border, should line up with the medial and lateral border of the third cuneiform. And the fourth metatarsal's medial border should line up with the medial border of the cuboid. And on the lateral view, normally, the bases of the metatarsals and the cuneiforms should be at the same height. There should not be a dorsal or plantar displacement of the metatarsal bases relative to the cuneiform. Also, Mary's line should be intact, and the talo-metatarsal angle should be within 15 degrees. And finally, the most plantar aspect of the first cuneiform should still be dorsal relative to the most plantar aspect of the fifth metatarsal base. Now what's abnormal to see on an AP is look for a 2 millimeter or greater diastasis or separation between the bases of the first and second metatarsal or an increase in the distance between the first and second cuneiforms. Look for something called the flex sign. And the flex sign is seen in over 80% of Lis Franc injuries. And it's an avulsion fracture due to pull of the Lis Franc ligament. And the bone that is avulsed off can come from either the medial cuneiform or the base of the second metatarsal. Finally, check for something called the positive gap sign, which is an increase in the distance between the hallux and the second toe. The Meyerson classification is divided into type A, B, and C. A type A injury is when all the metatarsals as a unit dislocate in one direction, and that direction is oftentimes medial, lateral, or dorsal. Type B injuries are known as partial incongruity. A type B1 is when the first metatarsal dislocates medial or dorsal, and the lesser metatarsals are not affected and are still in their anatomical position. The type B2 is when the first metatarsal is still in its own anatomical position and is not affected or injured, 
and one or more of the lesser metatarsals dislocates lateral or dorsal. A type C injury is known as divergent. A type C1 is when the first metatarsal dislocates medial, and one, two, or three of the lesser metatarsals dislocates in the opposite direction. So not all the metatarsals in a type C1 are dislocating, just some of them. But in a type C2, there is a complete divergence. And what that means is that the first metatarsal dislocates medial, and all of the lesser metatarsals as a unit dislocate in the opposite direction.